Well, good morning. Good morning. Good morning. <laughs> well, I guess when we have to compete with Roll Tide, <laughs> the, the solar eclipse, <laughs> and unfortunately illness, this is not a bad crew we got here today. <laughs> Welcome to the 11 o'clock hour of worship at St. John. We're glad you're here. And we we uh, glad to see everyone this morning. Take the time to read all of the announcements in the bulletin and those announcements that are on the screen. As you can see, really old men eating out uh, appears to be tomorrow night at 7 o'clock. And I will try to make that. Uh, but take the time to read all of the announcements in the bulletin. Are there any other additions, deletions, <coughs> embellishments to the announcements? David, is that you waving? Yes, just reminding you of breakfast this morning. <laughs> <laughs> David, David is... Thankfully, you reminding me of breakfast this morning, which I forgot. Uh, and, and he ate all of it, so there's nothing for me to do at this point. Well, uh, there's actually some left over there. Oh, he says there's some left over. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Uh, any others? If not, then uh, join me in our call to worship, as you'll find printed in the bulletin. We gather in the name of the risen Lord. Christ is risen. We gather as sisters and brothers of the resurrected one. Christ is risen. We gather to share our faith and to worship God. Christ is risen. We gather to proclaim the good news of Easter. Christ is risen. Please stand, if you would, and join in our opening hymn. That's page 445 in our hymn. And we will, uh, I don't remember whether we are singing the first or the... Speaking. No, we're speaking it. Speaking it. We are speaking? Yes. We're speaking what, Psalm 133 or 133? Yes, 133. 
133? Okay, thank you. Okay, we will speak the response. Unite us, Lord, unite us by your everlasting love. Behold how good and pleasant it is when we live together in unity. It is like the precious soil upon the day, running down upon the beard, upon the beard of air, running down upon the heart of the stars. It is like the dew of Hermon, which falls on the mountains of Zion. For there the Lord has commanded in blessing, like forevermore. Unite us, Lord, unite us by your everlasting love. Join me, if you uh, would, in our opening prayer, as you'll find printed in the book. God of the resurrection, we gather this morning as a community of believers. We come with joy to greet one another and to tell again and again the amazing news. Christ is risen. Love is victorious over death. You have given us new life in the name of your Son. May our singing, praying, listening, and proclaiming be a testimony to the power of your love to make us a new creation as a community of faith. We pray in the name of the risen Christ. Amen. Please be seated. Join me uh, in our hymn of praise, uh, Christ is Alive. You'll find it on 318 of our hymn.
the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. I'll be reading this morning from uh, 1 Corinthians, the first chapter, through the 1st through the 10th verse. Paul called to be an apostle of Christ Jesus by the will of God and our brothers and our brother Sosthenes to the church of God in Corinth, to those sanctified in Christ Jesus and called to be holy together with all those everywhere who call on the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, their Lord and ours. Grace and peace to you from God, our Father, and the Lord Jesus Christ. I always thank God for you because of his grace given you in Christ Jesus. For in him you have been enriched in every way, in all your speaking and in all your knowledge because our testimony about Christ was confirmed in you. Therefore, you do not lack any spiritual gift as you eagerly wait for our Lord Jesus Christ to be revealed. He will keep you strong to the end so that you will be blameless on the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. God, who has called you into fellowship with his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, is faithful. I appeal to you, brothers, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that all of you agree with one another, so that there may be no divisions among you, and that you may be perfectly united in mind and thought. My brothers, some from Chloe's household, have informed me, and, and God bless the reading of his word. share the word for this morning but on Saturday I was just had muscle spasms like you just can't even hardly move so I don't know if anybody's ever had them but they're just terrible and it's like you just moving it's, it's, it's not good if you get somewhere situated you just want to stay so I felt so bad and I said well I've had them before and so I just know what I have to do if I've got to have them it's just I had to get my two shots, my medicine and muscle relaxers and all that stuff. But I'm just thankful. I'm getting up and down like they, it never happened. Amen. And I'm so very thankful for that. And I thought I was going to have to say, well, honey, you, you, you're just going to have to do it for me because I, I can't get up and down. But, uh, but, but he didn't have to. And I'm so thankful that he allowed me to do it because uh, God has really been blessing me and, uh, in many ways as far as health and just confidence and stuff to do what he wants me to do. And so that's my God sighting for this morning and I'm so very thankful that I'm here to share it and not somewhere trying to feel, figure out how to get up and down. But um, also in our prayer request, uh, a prayer request I have is for um, uh, 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 Pastor Michelle, she's not feeling quite well today. She's been very busy and uh, taking care of all of us. She's such a good shepherd. I know she's been up and down Birmingham uh, to see about Jessica and stuff like that. And so I'm just thankful that today that she's able to get her rest and we're able to just be in communion in prayer for her. Amen. And so also today is my son's birthday. He turned 27. That's the third son and he's up in Tennessee. We were not sharing the birthday with them, but a happy birthday to him. Does anybody else have any God sightings they'd like to share? Yes, David, way up there. Uh, please turn your microphone on. Okay. <laughs> I think everybody heard me though, but do y'all hear me better now? Yes. Okay. Yes. Uh, Mr. T.J. went in on back on the uh, fourth of this month to have. Uh, Outpatient 
surgery to have a growth removed from his leg. Uh -huh. He was in the, or, already in the, I mean, they, take, they taken him into the prep area, and his blood sugar shot up so high until they could not do the, the operation, so he had to go home, so he has to do that all over again. Yeah, so we'll be in prayer for him. I think Ms. DJ was here in the morning, sir. No, that wasn't him, I thought. Okay, I guess I don't know who he's <laughs> But anyway, yeah, we would definitely keep Mr. TJ in prayer. Does anybody else have any? Sister Vivian? Yeah. I thank God we're in a church that perseveres. Amen, amen. Because when we don't have a choir director, we sing anyway. Amen. And we have wonderful people that will fill our pulpit and take care of our, take care of us when our ministers are ill or whatever. And we just, we just roll with it. We amen. just like the tide. We amen. just keep rolling. Amen. That is such a blessing. Such a blessing. Um, does anybody have any more? Right. So let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father, how we love you, how we praise you, and how we thank you, Father, for this opportunity to, to come to you and commune with you in prayer, Father. I thank you, Father God, for all the wonderful, wonderful God sightings and that you have been faithful to help and to heal in people's time of need. And Lord, we thank you, Father, for all of the people that are under um, under the weather on our prayer list of people that are seeking help and healing in various conditions and ways. Father, we bring them before you. We know you know each and every last one of them by name. You know their condition. You know what they're suffering from, Father. And we're thankful. We're so very thankful that you see us, you hear us, and you know us, and you know what we're feeling and what we're going through. And Father, because you're Almighty God, the creator of heaven and earth, and the creator of every body that has ailments, you know how to repair it and to make it work properly. And Lord, we just thank you for every person who's had surgeries or need to have surgeries. Going forward, Lord, we pray for the doctors, the nurses, the hospital, the facilities, and everything, the place that they will be. Let the love of God, which is shed abroad in our hearts, be the Holy Ghost, be very present and very compassionate and very good help for all of those. <coughs> and so, Father, with that, we pray and bless and thank you, Father, for being such a good Father, such a good Father. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank mm -hmm. continued to testify to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus, and much grace was upon them all. There were no needy persons among them. For some time to time, those who owned lands or houses sold them, brought the money from the sales, and put it at the apostles' feet, and it was distributed to everyone, distributed to anyone as he had need. And may the Lord bless the reading of his word.
Lord be with us this morning. Let us return a small portion of those gifts that you give to us in the service of thy kingdom. Amen. Amen. tempted in every way with sin as we were, 
yet he never sinned. He became the perfect sacrificial lamb that would erase the death of sin forever. Father, you did all this to restore us back to your family. Oh, how we love you and thank you for first loving us. Amen. 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 So this morning's message, we're going to talk from the scriptures of Acts um, 4, 32 through 35. And um, that was such a great, wonderful church. And we're going to learn a lot about them today and um, how their lives has blessed our lives so much. So now, after Jesus was resurrected and before he was taken up, he appeared over 40 times. 40 days to the disciples and he uh, showed to them that he was alive and he there were many signs and wonders and everything during this period of the 40 days so many different proofs about him being alive and on one occasion he told them I want you to go to Jerusalem and I want you to stay there until you receive the precious gift of the Holy Spirit so they did, they stayed there in Jerusalem uh, until they received the gift of the, uh, uh, the stay there to send the gift. He reminded them at the time. He said, now John, he baptized with water. But in a few days, I'm going to baptize you with the Holy Spirit. So, on the day of Pentecost, they were all there, seated there in Jerusalem on the day of Pentecost. And they waited. They were expecting because God had told them they was going to receive a precious promise. And so they were there. And all of a sudden came a violent wind, and it seemed like fire of tongues, and the fire rested on them all. All were filled with the Holy Spirit, and they began to speak with other tongues, different languages that they had never spoke before. But there on the day of Pentecost, there was people from all nationalities and groups and all this stuff, and God had them speaking boldly. <coughs> The word of God, the gospel message that we share so often, the good news of the gospel. And all these people from all over the place, they heard the message of how Jesus of Nazareth died for their sin and rose again. They heard that message. And many of them were uh, saved. And uh, many of them were saved because of it. But then, you know, there's always somebody going to come up there with all this negativity and say, you know, these men must be drunk. I mean, you know, there's no way. But Peter, as bold as he always was, but you know, he wasn't always bold. He was fearful. Sometimes we get fearful. And he denied Jesus, you know, after the resurrection because those were scary times. But after he was filled with the Holy Ghost, Peter got up and spoke just as bold. He said, no, they're not. This man, Jesus, who you crucified, that's, that's who's the one giving us the power uh, to speak this. And so, and so he gave a message to the, uh, to the uh, bold Peter addresses the crowd and reminded them of the scriptures. And then he delivered an altar call that caused over 3,000 people to be saved that day. And oh, what a wonderful message it was. Glory to God. 3,000 souls added to the kingdom of God. Amen. And then the scripture says about this whole big, huge church of believers. We call them a mega church today. They had all these members in this group. They devoted themselves to prayer and the teaching of the disciples. And the teaching of the disciples. They began to fellowship with one another. And they ate meals together. And they basically just got to know each other and formed community. And out of forming a community, and a community is always built to be concerned about the people within the community and to give and to share with the people in the community as they have needs. And so this big sign and wonder followed this big church, mega church, where they had done that. The people went out, sold all their land, gave it to the apostles, and the apostles distributed as they had need. But after, before all of that happened, the San Pedro, they didn't care anything about all this stuff. They started threatening Paul and John after they went about sharing the gospel and many signs and wonders followed John and Peter as they were preaching. People were healed. 
all types of things that no one could explain. But this became because they were very bold and they lived by the power of the Holy Ghost. And they went out and they preached messages that they didn't have the power to do. And they went about, people were healed and saved and all these different things. And even thousands more added to the church. You know they didn't like that. So the Sanhedrin came to Paul and John and threatened them and put them in jail and did all types of things to try to hinder them and stop them for keep delivering this message. But that didn't stop them. They continued on and spoke boldly <coughs> and they did that because they had fellowship and communion and time spent in the word with the Lord. And so then we jump down here to Acts with the scripture that we're talking about. All the believers were on one, were in one heart and mind, and no one claimed that any of their possessions were their own, but they shared everything they had. With great power, the apostles contended to testify to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus, and God's grace was so powerful and at work in them all that there was no one needy person among them for time to time, those who owned land and houses, they sold them and brought the money of the sale and put it at the apostles' feet. And then the apostles took the money and they distributed, distributed it to all of the people as they had need. This is what the force of the God kind of love will produce. Only God can produce that. I mean, you know, today, if everybody with this big mega church starts selling all their houses, selling all their land, and all this stuff and bring it to the church, they probably call it a cult. You know, <laughs> and start trying to rescue people and get them out from under it. You know, but this is an act of the goodness of God because the Bible says in 1 John 4, 18, it reads this way. It says, perfect love casts out fear. Amen. It says, when you are in love with, uh, have the perfect kind of God, you have no fear. These people didn't have any fear. Oh, Lord, where are we going to live? I mean, gosh, we said, what if, oh, God, my goodness, what if 20 years from now I meet my land and I done sold it and gave it away? What am I going to do? What if I don't have a house? What if I don't have they, they, they built up treasure in heaven because they had spent time with God. And this is what this, is, and this will produce. What a mighty testimony. What a wonderful sign. I mean, God, we saw that today. What a wonder. Oh my goodness, this kind of love is, comes from one place, Almighty God. There's nowhere else you'll find a love like that. And now we're going to, uh, before I close, I'm going to talk about two other scriptures. And the one we read uh, first, it says, 1 John, verse 10, I appeal to you, brothers and sisters, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, that all of you agree with one another in, in what you say and that there be no divisions among you, but you be perfectly united in mind and in thought. That there is a, a whole testimony right there. I mean, this big, huge church, they're saying the same thing. They're agreeing with each other in mind and thought about the Word of God. They're not sharing anything with the world that is not of the truth of the Lord Jesus Christ and Him resurrected. They're sharing the gospel of Jesus Christ in a unified way, in the same way. If you hear it from, if you hear it from uh, Keith or if you hear it from um, Ron, it's the same message. It's the love of Christ, the goodness of God that brings all men to repentance. And so that's what they lived in, in harmony and agreement with one another. What unity this will produce and consistency of the good word and the good news is always a, a, a wonderful to hear. We don't want to hear things about, we hear things today about our God and our God would never be, would never do. We have to share the gospel consistently so that uh, all people who are unbelievers can come to believe. Our God is a good and loving God. And what good news of the gospel this would be, and what a message to an unsaved world. That is the love, that is that God loves all people, and he does not have a greater respect 
for one nationality over another. Amen. I mean, how wonderful is that? And just think about it. In that day, it was all about the Jews that really had the relationship with God. And, and this group was better than this group. And don't do this. And this group was all these different things. So that's what they came out of. And then Paul appeals to them in a way to say, show no favoritism. Love everybody in community. All that are in Christ are in Christ. God shows no difference in anyone. And finally, we will look at Psalms. 33 verse 1. How good and pleasant it is when God's people live together in unity. That's a beautiful thing. Mm -hmm. We see that. I mean, you know, this is a wonderful church. We're all here together in love. And it's really good when God's people live together in unity. We share a great testimony. Uh, we share a great testimony of the love of God and who God is we see each other in a very loving way because you know God did first love us. Amen. So that we can love him. And when we and when then he tells us, he said, first love God, then love others as you love yourself. You know, that's a beautiful testimony to the world when we see that practice in the world. So the word there in in um in um, Psalms that says good how good it says. The word good there is translated from a Hebrew word, a word called tall. And that word um, is the word that God used when he used good in creation. You remember when God was creating everything, he said, and that was good. And this is good. And this is very good. I mean, you know. And so, but that's the same word that was used there in creation, creating man and the, all the earth, the lands and everything, and God say it's good. And then he said, how good, the same kind of good it is for men dwell together. How wonderful is that? And so, you know, whenever God um, created man, uh, he said it was good, all of creation. In verse, in verse 31, he calls it very good. So, um, also, when God refers to Adam being alone, in, in that same setting, he says that's that's not good. And in Hebrew, that's called non non total, non good. That man be alone. So he says, I'm going to create you a helper. And he created Eve, and he said that's very good. God's design for mankind has always to be for us to live together in unity with Him. And so uh, even when Adam and Eve of uh, 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 sin and had to go out of the presence of God. Immediately, God put in the plan for Jesus to come and rescue us off the bank. How wonderful is that? I mean, he always had us in his mind. He always had us in his heart whenever he was uh, creating, uh, when he was creation, we were always a part of his purpose. We were always a, plan, a part of his plan. So, this verse reminds the reader that as far as God is concerned, community and relatedness to humanity, helping, working, in partnership is good. But also the word is used how pleasant. And the word there is, is the Hebrew translation or the word that it comes from is uh, nomen, which means to include, which means to be lovely, to be good, friendly, good and friendly. And glorious toward and, and joyous toward one another. So we could read the verses like that. How good, how very good, and how very lovely, how very friendly, how very pleasant it is when God's people live together in unity. And how wonderful that I mean, you know, we hear so many uh, confrontations and so much things that are going on in the world today. But just think how lovely and what a testimony and what a wonderful, beautiful thing when all of God's creation, the church, lived together in harmony. What a witness it is. The goodness of God, that's a good thing. The goodness of God, it says, it draws all men to repentance. Just think about how good and pleasant it is when we dwell together. That that same goodness can draw somebody out of darkness into the marvelous light. Oh, my God. What a wonderful, wonderful testimony to the world. So, 
As we can conclude our message, because I'm never really a long-winded preacher, <laughs> we can conclude that God created us to be in communion with each other and in fellowship with one another and to work together for the good, common good of each other. And there God will be right there in the midst of it because we are the very temples of the Holy Spirit. So the Lord is there with us in communion, in fellowship, in love with each other. So the Bible also tells us where there are two agree, there I am. He's right there with you. When two people will agree, touch and agree of anything, and you shall have whatsoever in heaven and in earth. Our God is so good. This is the plan for mankind. And this kind of love is a great, great, great message to an unsaved world. So God bless you. And as we close in prayer, let us pray. Holy Spirit, lead us to devote our lives to prayer, to teaching, and to meditation in the Lord, filling us with continuously with the Holy Spirit so we may speak out the good news with power and boldness, and may we live in love and fellowship with one another. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Ms. Vivian. That was a wonderful message. I appreciate it very much. And I know you want to thank for that. Please stand and join me in our benediction hymn. Uh, you will find it on 467 of our hymnal. <laughs> Thank you.